I took a break from an incredibly busy week of work to make a few images with Gabby. I'm sure you've noticed my propensity for mixing colors of light, uh, notably the ubiquitous orange and blue combination. I'm just experimenting with all kinds of expressive light and you can see that in my uh, Loneliest Colors zine as well as a lot of other work. And I'm still doing this and this is, uh, this is footage from my shoot with Gabby. On the right I have my uh, Godox uh, SL150W uh, which I reviewed a few videos back and there will be a card for that up there I think right here. And on the left I have uh, behind in some barn doors I, I got from another source my Zuma LED 60 light, which I got from eBay for considerably less than $100. I saw a, a review of this on YouTube and I'll try to link that uh, in the description. Still officially testing this light, but I like it so far, but it didn't wind up being the primary player in this in this shoot. Uh, I would say this was a positive outing with it, but I'm not ready to release a final review for it yet. The splash of color in this video came from a an old photogenic mini spot I picked up from a friend recently. It's rated around 150 watts tungsten. I wondered how it would stack up next to these LEDs. It actually did pretty well. Now I know she her face was mostly in sh shadow, so uh, it's you know it's it kind of uh, doesn't tell a full story, but considering that I was in the studio and shooting around uh, 100 ISO and shooting around three point something f stop, I uh, I had it on a tripod. I was shooting about one thirtieth, one fortieth of a second, so I wouldn't get camera shake. But I wanted to max out the quality for the dynamic range that you can squeeze at a native ISO or ISO if you want to. So as far as that went, it, it held up pretty well. And I noticed uh, the tungsten light, of course, was very warm, very orange. I, I was looking the day, I have daylight balanced LEDs and I realized that it's already got a little bit of the orange and blue, but if I set my camera white balance to tungsten, it would pretty quickly turn neutral and then make that those LEDs very blue. So what we're looking at here is auto white balance with LED uh, daylight balance bulbs on the background. And I'm about to turn on my tungsten balance, older um, traditional light. You'll notice that the background looks kind of neutral, but this looks very warm. So this is on daylight white balance. This is set to tungsten white balance and what you can see here is that she looks very neutral and now the daylight background looks very blue and this can be enhanced in post or by lowering the the exposure right here and then bringing up the exposure and get a little bit closer here so that makes it a little brighter and you can see how this makes her face look very neutral, but the background's very blue. And I set this on fluorescent white balance, and actually it doesn't get a bad effect. But now that we're back in daylight, you can see how warm she is and how neutral the background is. An auto white balance kind of is a balance of both of them, but I'm going to move a daylight bulb on for her real quick. And then so the tungsten bulb is now off. And you see now that how neutral it is. This is set to daylight and I, I lowered the exposure a bit so you can see the color of the light. And you see now in tungsten how blue it is and this is a daylight balanced LED. And for her last, last bit of uh, clarity on that, I now put that light on her move it in because it's overpowering the other one. And I'm going to turn off the daylight balance light. And you see where that happens. So yeah. So that's what I did. I just flipped my Fuji GFX 50S to the tungsten white balance and it immediately looked like this.
Also, please support me on Patreon. I have several tiers of support, and uh, the top two will get you into the monthly print club, which begins in June, or my quarterly zine club, which also includes the monthly print club. The zine club will include, like it sounds, a quarterly zine of probably 30 or more pages on various sizes and different types of paper. I'm going to experiment. It's going to be a lot of fun. I have a couple of members for that already. I have a couple of members of the monthly print club. And I'd love to be sending you prints and uh, a zine, and I would appreciate your support. I've heard you send. I'm here. I am Lord Analog. And according to this, you have mixed technologies. Be careful. Be careful how you tread. Or the council will have you again and we will find you guilty of mixing technologies. <sighs> yeah, I never listened to that guy. I needed a little bit more ambiance. So I took some canned fog and sprayed it around, as you can see in this footage. I did take care not to get it on the hot light, especially, or as little as I could, because the hot light, as they say, gets actually very hot. And this canned air can be uh, somewhat flammable. I didn't want any accidents happening with that. So not to mention it, I doubt it's any good for the interior of that, of that old light. I threw in this little old CRT television. I had her hold it because it has a handle on it, and I'd never really taken advantage of the handle before, so I thought it was kind of cool to uh, actually have her carrying it. So I just had her hold that, and that's another reason I went with the slower shutter speed, because you have to shoot at 1 60th of a second or slower generally to capture the scan rate of these old CRTs. Imagine it's similar with uh, newer monitors, but I don't have as much experience actually photographing those, but it does seem to be pretty true. So I shot 1 40th of a second for this also on a tripod to reduce camera shake. Of note, uh, the, the canned air actually does leave residue on, uh, on slick surfaces, just like uh, the the fog machine stuff does. So you should use caution, uh, especially on slick surfaces because it could get slippery. I didn't have any issues with it getting on anything here, but I was also shooting on this uh, fairly disposable paper backdrop. And uh, I also take care not to get it on my uh, camera lens and stuff like that. And always ask your models if they have issues with with this stuff or and check in with them and make sure that they're not having any troubles because a lot of people will try to tough it out but Gabby didn't have any trouble with it but it's always good to check and make sure your models are comfortable and feeling well it's uh, just a nice thing to do and uh, in a lot of cases it might be the, the right thing to do for sure that was a great little quick shoot with Gabby and I appreciate her playing along with that and trying out just, uh, you know, experimental lighting and putting up with the fog again. And here you'll see what I did in Capture One mostly. I did a little bit of softening and then I also altered the color a bit, kind of added a little bit of a purplish tone in the shadow areas and that's about it. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to keep watching, don't forget to turn on notifications so you won't miss anything. I'd like to thank my patrons, Rachel Singletary, also Ronnie Pittman. There's also May and Sarah Wilkinson and Stephanie K. Smith. Thank you for your support.